Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Joy Audio Shine. This is the latest or one of the latest products to be launched uh, from uh, from China uh, and um, uh, as many others it's it's obviously surrounded with a lot of questions, a lot of uh, um, you know uh, curiosity. What is it? What isn't it? Uh, where does it come from? What brands are or maybe related to it? What brands are not related to it? What's the story? Well anyway um, what I'm going to say is my own personal opinion, obviously. I'm not going to confirm or, or deny. Uh, I will leave uh, those confirmations to be done by those that um, think they, they, they are able to do it in a, in, a, in a much more concrete manner than I am. But my opinion is that uh, Joy Audio is obviously um, a, a brand uh, associated with an, another brand, in this case in particular with KZ. Um, I personally believe that it's a brand that, that KZ has created, much like uh, Moondrop created Soft Ears. And I think uh, that uh, Joy Audio was created uh, as um, the stepping stone of, for KZ to, to bring forth a, uh, let's say, a mid-tier or top-of-the-line tier line of, of products. And this is their first, um, their first uh, um, IEM in debt in that line of, uh, let's say, more higher quality products, which is a Shine, a OnePlus 2. And, um, well, yeah, um, uh, the, I have it here. I've, been, I've had it now for a few days. I've listened to it carefully. I've, I've let it burn in. I've, I've done all sorts of things to, to be able to now come to this, uh, this, this uh, review and, and, and talk to you guys about it in a, in a more definite and concrete manner. Anyway, this is the sleeve that it comes with. In the reverse side of the sleeve, there's a little bit of information, nothing really special, but anyway, that's the sleeve. And then the box itself <coughs> is this box. Let me actually just do one thing here quickly. So the box actually comes like this, the Joy Audio, Joy Audio logo over there. Okay, and then it opens up like many other, okay, boxes of, of this style. Brings a nice selection of tips, although unfortunately none of these tips worked for me. Um, the red ball ones were, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to sound nasty, but were a disgrace. Uh, the white ones, these white ball ones here, uh, shallow ones, actually worked okay-ish. The thing is, they are very, uh, very soft, so they had a tendency of just breaking up very easily inside of my ear and, and then obviously losing seal and, and the whole sound kind of just was, was downhill from there. The IMs came over there, obviously. This is a cable that it brings, which is a cable that um, I believe I have seen this in another KZ. I'm trying to remember which one exactly, but I, I just cannot remember. But anyway, this is very much a, a, a KZ cable. Yeah, I think, I think I could be wrong that I saw this cable being used in the CCA CA16 not the CA16 Pro, the CA16, the, the first one. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's, a fi it's, it's, it's fine. Although, having said that, and considering that we are talking about uh, an attempt for a more high-end product, it would have been nice, this is my personal opinion, since there are cables of that nature which are accessible, it would have been nice that they would have included a modular cable. This is just me saying. It would have been nice. A modular cable, I think, would have complemented the, 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 this whole accessories. And I think, honestly, that the, the tips do need a revision. Uh, this is my honest opinion. I am sure I'm not going to be the only one that will have, will have issues with, with the tips like I did. Anyway, that's that. It then brings inside this box a case, which is a case which is very reminiscent of the cases that Duno uses with its, uh, or used with its EST-112, if I'm mistaken, the only thing is it doesn't bring a logo on the case itself, which I think is a pity, such, since such attention to detail was paid in other areas. I think that a nice little Joy Audio Shine logo or something over here would have been, you know, would have been cool, would have been nice. But anyway, it is what it is. It then brings some paperwork here, you know, instruction manual, so on and so forth, so nothing really too important over there and then brings this which is basically the the, the the center point of this IEM is the fact that it brings these four switches 
uh, allowing adjustments of the lows, the highs, the ultra highs, and uh, what they call a full frequency overall regulation. Anyway, I don't know what they mean by that, but it is what it is. As you can see, I've written all over it because I did all sorts of tests. I actually tried all of the configurations that they that they allow with these many switches. You can have 16 configurations. Obviously, some of them just fall completely out of um, context and are pointless. And these four configurations plus an extra configuration that I did are, in my opinion, the configurations which make sense. Um, basically, the standard is uh, zero, 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 so all the switches down. Then you have the high, what they call the hi-fi, which is just with the full frequency overall regulate full frequency overall regulation um, hyped up, and this has a tendency. This also kind of. Um, cuts away some of the bass to a certain extent um, then you have the 101 uh, sorry the 1001 configuration which is for RMB and rock which is one of the, the configurations that I used the most after the standard well actually I use this one the most and then I use the standard then you have the 0011 classical uh, which is very similar to the hi-fi in essence honestly it's very very similar and then you have the pop which is with all the switches up um, and again, it's 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 very similar to the R&B and rock configuration. There isn't a whole lot of differences in the in that. The other configuration that I used was the configuration with the the first switch, the base switch on on, and then the rest off. And that configuration yielded uh, more uh, more of a little boost to the base, and uh, and yeah, well, that 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 was it. Um, in the graph section, obviously, of of course, I will be showing you all of these um, configurations with a little bit more detail. I'm not going to bore you a lot with that as well because it's it's it can get a little bit boring. But I will say this: that I normalized all my measurements to one kilohertz. And if some of you did see some of the uh, posts that I made yesterday about the, the graphs, uh, you will have uh, noticed, and I mentioned it as well, that the biggest alterations that happened to this IEM mean, with the two new switches are down to the actual, it's actually down in the base section. So anything up to 1K is the area which gets the most affected. Above 1K, you know, and from 1K up to about um, uh, 4, you don't really see much changes between them. Um, and then above 4 kilohertz, then you do see some changes and above 10 kilohertz, you do see some changes. The one that stands out the most in all of these configurations, perhaps in terms of its overall changes, is the hi-fi and sorry, the, the, the R&B and rock configuration. Those, that, that's the configuration that really stands out the most when it comes to talking about the alterations in the above 1 kilohertz area. Okay, uh, All of them in the base area or let's call it below the one kilohertz area. Uh, all of them, you, you do see changes, okay? Uh, some more, some less, but you do see changes. Um, basically, basically, so that you have a kind of a, uh, an idea, the, the, the all zero configurations, the all, um, all down switches is the, what is the, let's say, uh, the neutral basic point of it, which is like a kind of a warmish base, and then, um, with uh, the first switch on, you have a tendency of either lowering the mid bass slightly or increasing the sub bass, depending on what other switches are then uh, also used uh, after that one. But like I said, I'll, I'll, when I get to the graph section, I'll explain this a little bit better so you guys can can understand. In terms of what is being used internally on the IEM, um, they are using um, the seven millimeter driver, which I believe is shared with the CCA HM20, and then they are using a 29.689, which is a perfectly run-of-the-mill, perfectly normal run-of-the-mill, full-range uh, BA, um, seen, for example, in the KB or Neon, and in many other applications. So it's a, it's a BA that can do full-range, basically, and it, it does it pretty decently. And then they're using a 30019, which is, again, a, a very standardized kind of, uh, of a BA. Actually, the 30019 is the same IEM, the same IEM, the same BA that is used in the uh, HM24 for, for the highs, or for the highs and, and very high frequencies, let's put it that way. Um, in that IEM, then the mids are, are handled by the, um, uh, oh my, I forget now, the 50024, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's that, 50024, yeah, I think it's that one. They use six of those drivers 
plus one uh, of the 3019 and then plus the seven millimeter driver which i am assuming it's the same driver at least from from what i've seen it looks like the same driver as for the iems themselves well they are using a, a 3d printed resin shell again not the first time they're using they have, they've done this with the uh, hn20 that was the first implementation of a of a 3d uh, printed shell uh, and much like in the hm20 they use independent ducts for each one of the three drivers uh, so there's individual um, uh, nozzles let's put it that way uh, one going to the to the, to the dd one going to the 29689 the mid-range ba and one going to the super high and high frequency ba the, the 30019 um, it then has a metal uh, face plate which also kind of encloses the uh, the switches and the one thing I want to bring your attention to uh, straight away is this okay I've got both IEMs with the cable facing up as you can see if you look carefully on this one let me try and just focus it sorry about that and forgive my forgive my fingers I know I've got ugly fingers okay so if it's the left side you will see the on switches on the top side and the numbers are on the bottom one two three four okay while on the right hand side if you look carefully it's inverted okay so it's upside down so pay careful attention to that when those of you that do buy it pay careful attention to that when you're doing the switches okay so if you want to put it correctly you have to turn it around so uh, i don't know if this was just maybe my unit that came like this or if there are other units that are coming like this i have absolutely no idea um i've actually got another unit coming in precisely to, to to also confirm this and if that is the case i'll let you guys know but obviously all of those people that have already bought or are all thinking about buying they can also attest to this being maybe a mistake or maybe something that it's come like that from factory and if it has come like that from factory i think it's something that they should correct honestly because it's easy to correct it it's very easy to just swap, swap that around and, and put it in its correct position i don't believe it's an issue to do that so it's a conjunction of metal and resin 3d printed uh, shell uh, two pin connector okay i am not using the uh, stock cable as you guys can obviously see i'm using a yinio silver silver plated cable really nice cable actually i've had this cable for maybe i don't know four years or something um really nice cable actually and um that's it basically in terms of its fit fits nicely no issues uh, the issue yes that I did encounter was with the tips so definitely definitely some 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 tip rolling will be necessary and and again this is another little small recommendation tips need to be changed people tips need to be changed these tips that they they that uh, that they have used by joy audio by kz or you know they are not the ideal tips i actually would have preferred maybe some star lines to be up to be honest with you um so yeah that's that's basically the the you know the physical aspect of the of the the shine um you know it, it's it's a nice looking i am it looks it looks looks really nice looks looks like quality um you know fits nicely isolates well once you found the right tip and to 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 fit you so there's really not much more than i can say in that aspect on to what what we all want to know is what does it sound like what we know how anyway um in their literature uh, they uh, were a little bit uh, i would say um well they've done this before when when some of the single dds that they've launched in the recent couple of months came out they they did comparisons of you know with the ie 900 and and uh, a few other very high-end uh, IEMs because of the graphs and as we all know graphs yes are a good indicator uh, and it's nice to see that uh, brands are trying more and more to tune properly and not just put parts together and just assume that we consumers will just take it so it's nice to see that they are doing their work they are they are becoming more um, more attentive to our needs so they're doing nice tuning and they're doing things which graphically look very nice but a graph doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sound good let me make that perfectly clear because sometimes you know uh, 
maybe I am as well one one of the people that can be considered at fault because sometimes I might not actually convey that uh, that notion correctly. But the graphs are to be uh, taken with a very big grain of salt in that they can be an indicator to certain aspects, but they do not indicate, for example, how overall um, a, th a thing like a subjective thing like tonality or timbre will be like okay they, they, they don't they, they cannot uh, at least I myself believe in that firmly and all of this to say what that again and I'm actually going to show you the literature so you don't think it's me again uh, they've gone down the route of wanting to compare the, sh the joy or your shine with some very uh, uh, some you know uh, like with a Duno Titan S, which is a single DD, the Fio JH3, <coughs> which is a bit of an older IM, but anyway, um, the, the QDC v, V3, which is a $500 IM. So they, they've gone to the to the extent of wanting to compare it with those IMs, and, and they've even got uh, some graphs and everything. And it's all very nice, and it's all very good, but the reality is, there is differences. I didn't compare it with those. I could have compared with some of those IEMs that you mentioned because I've actually got them. Um, I decided to make my comparison with other IEMs, which I think are IEMs that a lot more people will, will own to a certain extent and are IEMs that um, uh, some of them uh, were kind of market references, let's put it that way. Um, and what are those IEMs? Oh, the first one I've got here is probably one of the nicest IEMs that uh, TRN has launched in the last couple of months, which is the, the ST5. TRN has also been a, a brand that's been going up and down, and launching good products and then launching products which are not as good. But the ST5, I think, was a, a well, well-conceived one plus four. Um, it's got a brilliant coated dynamic driver and then it uses a, the usual 5.024s, the, the usual run-of-the-mill BAs. Overall, the sound is it's a it's an it's a v-shaped sound yes it is but it's been nicely uh, nicely done and i actually personally think that it's a much better IM than the vx pro which is the top of the line um hybrid that they have one plus eight so this one plus four it costs around 55 to 60 dollars and in my opinion in my humble opinion i think it's the best um the best uh, hybrid that trn currently makes uh, and one that I thought made absolute absolute sense to want to compare with the with the shine. Uh, so that's the first one. The second one is obviously obviously it had to be is the CCA HM20, uh, one plus seven, using five double O twenty four six of them. Like I've mentioned, one three double O one nine. So it's basically got the same tweeter BA, and then it's got six BAs for the mids. Um, while the Shine only uses 129,689, and then it's got the same 7mm DD. It's also got a 3D printed shell, it's also got individual ducts for the, the drivers, uh, nice built construction. There's, there's absolutely nothing here, honestly, that uh, doesn't, um, uh, doesn't uh, qualify it to be compared with the Shine, okay? The third IEM I have here is the GS Audio GD3C, which was, and is still for me, uh, a, the go to one plus two at a hundred dollars this is in my opinion the equivalent of the olina so if you want a really good uh, single dd uh, iem the olina still stands as the the, the best choice at up to a hundred dollars sometimes you can even get the olina well actually it's the olina se which is an improvement as well not a huge improvement over the original olina but an improvement nonetheless and you can get it for around 80 80 just over 80 dollars um actually i forgot to mention this but the uh, the shine is available at linsol where this one came from uh, and it's available at uh, do do high um D &D, uh, audio store from aliexpress which i believe belongs to uh, uh, linsol anyway so gd3c one plus two it's using a 29.689 as well it's using a 10 millimeter not a uh, seven millimeter and it's using a 3095 for the for the tweeter so slightly different no switches no switches nothing just a nicely uh, done shell nicely tuned plays 
unbelievably well plays really 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 well i mean nice one plus two and then uh, not the final but almost the final i've got here the tri the star c uh, which is a i am which has switches as you can see four possible modes for those switches as well and um again uh, eight millimeter dynamic driver so very close to the dynamic driver of the shine 29.689, so a, a, a very similar configuration to the GS Audio, just that it's got the switches, slightly smaller dynamic driver, very, very nice looking shell, very premium. And and the Star C in its, you know, is an IM that um, received a little bit of a mixed results, in my opinion. Some people consider it to be a little bit light in the bass and, and so on. I personally didn't find it light in the bass and I consider myself to be a bass head. Um, and some people uh, kind of uh, thought that it, 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 it wasn't, um, it, it didn't have the greatest tonality. You know. I personally, this is my opinion, I personally think that the Star C is probably one of the better TRIs that uh, they have. Um, the overall balance of the sound is very well achieved. It's relatively neutral. It's a neutralish, neutralish sounding IEM. It's got no sibilance. It's very detailed. Super, super detailed. I mean, in terms of technicalities, absolute monster. And it just has, from the first time you listen to it, it just has that very hi-fi sensation. You, you, you listen to it and compared to any one of these IMs that I have here, and I've got one more to still talk about. It's the IM that jumps to you as the one that sounds the most premium, okay? It conveys that premium feel the most, period. That's that's the reality. And this is, well, you can get it sometimes on, on sale. I've seen it for $105, but the usual price is around $120. Okay, so the price of the, the, the Shine is $80, roughly. So a little bit more expensive, um, this is almost the same, $100, you can get it sometimes at $90, so almost the same thing. The HM20 is about $60, the, 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 the ST5 about $60, $55, $60. And the final one is a single DD that's been, call, been causing quite a bit of a rage lately, which is the QE Ears Cadenza. And uh, <coughs> I myself consider it to be probably one of the best uh, sub-$50 IEM, sub IEMs that you can get. And even, even capable of trading blows with the likes of an Olina, okay? Um, for what I listened to, there was not one single occasion where I would say, oh no, this is not doing its work, it's not performing like it should. It's an absolute beast of an IM. It uses a brilliant code to driver as well. Um, really well tuned, kind of a harmonious tune. Really nice mids, really nice highs. The extension that it has, it's perfect in my opinion. Um, nice sub bass extension. It's got a tuning which is very similar to the likes of the, the TK ZK um, uh, or, uh, Oranos, the, the Tenai 5 C3. It's also got a similar tuning. The, the Tang Zhu One Ear, they also got uh, that, that's also got a very similar tuning to this. So it's a kind of a harmony style tune. This is an absolute monster of an IM. It plays really, really well. Period. Let's call things. Let's be. Let's be transparent, people. I I try, I try and be as transparent as possible. And many times I see myself having to kind of control myself a little bit and not say certain things because I don't want to offend people. I don't want to sound like I'm being mean. I don't want to be disrespectful to 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 you know the companies that the manufacturers and so on and so forth. But ultimately, I'm here for one reason, which is to be honest and sincere and convey the truth to people. Convey, well, my truth at least, my truth to people. And by, I believe that I am capable enough uh, to, to convey a truth which will be uh, very much accepted by a lot of people. I'm, uh, I'm not yet to, to be praised by anybody or to be uh, taken as, oh, I know it all, I am the one. I, no, I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. Anyway. After this lengthy presentation, what do I have to say about the sound? Um, first thing about the, the shine, you definitely have to choose your tips. You do not choose the tips properly and it's not going to shine. 
simple it's not going to perform as you would like it to perform second thing to to take notice about the shine it needs power period end of story you connect this to a normal small power you know not not very powerful dongle or you connect this to your phone and this is going to sound very plain it's not going to impress you actually at low volumes it sounds very basic and and i'm not saying this in a bad way i'm just trying to say this so that people do not create this you know do not create this expectation that is then not met at low volumes the shine doesn't really show what it's capable of doing once you crank that volume up past halfway let's put it that way then you start seeing what it's capable of doing and by this i'm saying what i'm saying the following it's an im that scales well it's an im that has on certain settings and my two end ups that my two settings that i ended up doing the majority of the listing or the standard stock zero 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 setting and the rmb and rock setting which is one zero zero one and the difference between the two is that the one zero zero one slightly boosts the sub bass slightly drops the mid bass slightly increases the area of four and above okay so it creates its maybe or perhaps what could be conceived as a more v-shaped signature fine but i feel it's a signature which better matches the abilities of the shine being a seven millimeter driver it is um, you know although you might graphically see a whole lot of bass and you might think oh this is going to be a crazy v and no 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 um it's the same situation that happens sometimes with certain 12 millimeter drivers and 30 millimeter drivers. And my case at point, for example, is a BQEYZ Autumn and the, and the BQEYZ Topaz. They've got big dynamic drivers. So by having big dynamic drivers, they can graphically show less bass as compared to another IM. When in reality, when you listen to them because of the bigger driver, the bigger displacement, the biggest surface area, the biggest, the bigger displacement of air, they will sound more powerful. They will have more, <coughs> more ability to move air. And that's exactly what happens in this case. Being a 7mm driver, although it can graphically show that it's got this humongous amount of bass, it doesn't have. And when you compare it straight away with the HM20, which is the one that probably shares the same driver, I'm, I'm almost certain about this, you can notice that this, even this, in its biggest setting for the bass, which would be the 1000, which isn't even a setting that they have, okay, this in its biggest setting does not have the bass of the HM20. And in my opinion, in my opinion, I could be wrong, it doesn't have the bass of the HM20 because the complexity of the crossover network here has uh, not only made it harder to drive but has introduced into it uh, certain into the whole circuit has introduced certain uh, electrical characteristics that actually have to a certain extent taken away a little bit of the dynamics that the driver could have i when the hm20 came out it was subjected to a bit of uh, of, of, of some criticism that oh no it's too too much bass and this and that personally i didn't think that i personally thought that it had ample bass yes it's got good amount of bass but it, it was never in my opinion overpowering or anything of the sort only in in a very few songs that i listened to i did encounter it to be just eh, maybe just a little bit touching on the excessive side but overall <coughs> Excuse me, guys. What overall I found about the HN20 was that it was always capable of giving a very nice lushness, a very nice full bass. On the Shine, you get that kind of feel, but in a more moderate way. So when it comes to the bass department, you can say that it's an HN20 that's been, it's been reined back, it's been you know pulled back a bit. The quality of the bass is basically the same the quantity is significantly less. As compared to the others over here, the cadenza, more bass, not only in terms of quantity, but in terms of quality, it's got a better bass than the Shine, it does. The same thing goes for the ST5. It's got 
more quantity and more quality in the base. It's a quicker base, more of it. The uh, GD5, the GD5, the GD3C, sorry, um, more extension in the lower, in the, in the, the sub base area, it's got more extension, a little bit more of impact as well. But again, um, I mean, keep in mind, when I say this is more and this is more than the shine, I'm not saying huge differences. The difference that you do notice, yes, and it's very obvious, is in terms of the overall volume. Yes, more volume, more this, they've got more displacement, so you notice. But the quality of the base is almost almost identical. A little bit more quickness, yeah, on the on the on the ST5. But I mean, they are these are never day and night differences. Going back to the GD3C, the same thing applies. It's got more quantity because of the bigger displacement driver, more quality, but not a huge difference. Finally, the uh, base on the on the on the star C, definitely the base with probably the biggest difference in terms of quant quality to the the, the shine. Uh, my opinion, I think it's the one that shows that superiority the most. In terms of quantity, very equal. It's not in the base where you see the star C, the star C pull away. Okay. Um, Depending on the setting that you have, there will be a little bit more bleed, a little bit less bleed. Um, on the hi-fi setting, the bleed is less. Uh, on the pop, the setting is a little, the bleeding is a little bit more. On the standing, the the, the bleeding is a little bit more as well. Um, on the r and and rock, the bleeding is a little bit less. But you know, uh, again, the, the the differences are not humongous differences and and i think that you should also take into account that these differences will then or this extra base or extra mid base that the different settings offer do have a very important uh, influence and it is in how the sound ultimately of the bas comes across in the standard setting for example in the 0000, zero, zero, zero setting uh, you do notice the shine to be slightly darker um, there isn't a lot of twinklies and sparklies. It's it's a more subdued sound. What brings with that? What comes with that in terms of benefit is a more tonally correct sound. You don't notice so much that B A timbre and tonality. So it sounds it sounds more polished, okay. But you lose detail and so on and so forth. However, if you use the one double O one setting, the R and B and rock. Or the classical or the pop because there is a, a boosted um, slightly boosted higher frequency and uh, in some of them you lose bass and mid bass or you didn't just subdue slightly the mid bass what that does is psychoacoustically it opens up the sound it makes the rest of the frequency sound more open and more abundant so that's all very nice more detail more resolution with that but at the cost of you also noticing more that tonality, that BA timbre, that metallicness. And I have to confess that in certain songs, which I personally re re you know, enjoy listening to and, and, and make a point to listen to when I'm, when I'm doing my reviews, there were quite a few instances where I was kind of, oh my God, this is, this is starting to hurt. This is really getting to me. What songs are those? For example, for example, let me give you an example here. Crescent City Strut from Les Sabler, that's one of them. Um, another song that I found um, became a little bit unpolished in, in, with the settings which emphasize more the higher frequencies was, for example, um, Forbidden Fruit from Candace Springs, um, Passing Time from Christopher Goes, um, Unconditional from Soul Persona, definitely. Uh, was one of the songs that I noticed that the most sweat from JK Reeve remix again another song that you noticed that the the settings which emphasize the mids and the highs on here kind of also bring with it the negative aspect of you uh, being able to differentiate that's a DD that's the BA that's BA timbre okay and personally those that follow me uh, know that I, I like uh, hybrid I am to as much as possible sound as coherent as possible I don't want to be able to distinguish between the different drivers. I want it to all come across as one single driver, well executed. So, in that aspect, the, 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 the tuning that you choose, which 
yes, if on the one hand it's versatile and will allow you to adjust better the IM to whatever music genre you're listening to, my honest opinion is once you've adjusted it, and you know, I don't think that you will be changing it a lot. That that's just me. You know, once you found that setting and that one that really does you has that mojo that you like. The, the probability of you be changing around it's not you, you not you will end up more most likely accepting that one or two songs maybe do not sound ideal under that setting but the sound the songs that do sound ideal are so much more that you you know you will accept that one or two that are not, not perfect and you just dis disregard them okay so the settings definitely definitely are, are interesting and and, and, and it's a nice feature that they've included, something which obviously you don't find at this price range, but it's not something that I think will be much messed around once you've found the right one. Same thing like, for example, in the Star C. My Star C, I left it where it is, which is basically in the neutral position, the, the standard stock position of the trying all of the different settings, and that's the one that just sounds best. End the story. Um, in terms of detailed retrieval, soundstage, uh, imaging, all of those, again, are going to be affected by what setting you use. If you are using the R&B and rock setting or the hi-fi setting, yes, you will notice a slightly bigger soundstage. Not very high, but slightly bigger soundstage. Uh, depth is acceptable, more detailed retrieval, more technicalities in that department, but I never in any of the settings found the imaging to be particularly amazing the soundstage fine but I never found the imaging to be anything to write home about uh, in terms of the timbre and the tonality the timbre and the tonality in the standard position so it's zero 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 I think it's the best timbre and the best tonality it's the one that sounds or comes across at least as being the most natural the other ones because of the emphasis there is on the mids and the high frequency have a tendency of using uh, feeling more the coloredness of the sound okay so I think in terms of the technicalities that's covered Take it, you know, timbre, tonality, and so on and so forth. Soundstage, imaging, detailed retrieval as well. It's covered. Frequencies, it's covered. In, uh, well, like I said, the highs are the ones that uh, can be sounding a little bit harsh or just a little bit off, depending on what uh, what settings you have and, 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 and what you actually... You know, the, the funny thing about the, 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 the shine is, if you listen to it on its own, and once you've gotten this situation of the switches set to the position it's the best for you and the, the, the tips sorted out and so on and so forth. You listen to it on its own and it sounds an, it sounds like an impressive IM. It sounds it sounds good. It sounds like a really mature KZ and, a, and, a, and an obvious step forward in the right direction. And if uh, you know if, if past history of KZ is anything to go by, you can be sure that in this year you will see many more IEMs in, in this configuration from them coming out. There will be many more hybrids coming out of them, and each one will be an improvement over this one, for sure. So buying this one can, can be, uh, in my opinion, perceived more as, yes, you're buying a good product, something that's been well executed, uh, but still has many points which uh, are open to improvement. And, you know, you, you can be a part of history, okay? As compared to these IEMs then, how does this uh, ultimately stack up or how does it compare? Well, compared to the ST5, and some might say, oh, ST5, it's not in the same league. Yes, true, it's not in the same league when it comes to the switches. But the tuning that the ST5 has is a safe, uh, pleasant tuning that will satisfy the majority of people. And the only thing here yeah, that is, is really a feature that comes out in a negative manner is the timbre of the BA. The BA timbre really comes out here. And, you know, because it doesn't have switches, you can't do anything about it. While over here, you have, like I mentioned before, that possibility of just leaving it in the standard format, and that timbre and that tonality become, uh, you know, half decent or half, half um, within what you would expect, okay? Um, so, you could basically say that yes, it beats the ST5, but it's not like something that, oh no, it's it's a definitely you must you have an ST5, must you go and fetch a Joy Audio? I would leave it to you, okay. As compared to the HM20, um, personally, personally, this is me personally, the HM20 is a better IEM, definitely. 
And why do I say this? I like more the way the bass is being done there. I never get the same kind of fullness in the bass uh, on the Joy Audio, the, the Shine, as I do on the HM20. And I like more the treble on the on the on the HM20 as well. Although yes, you can perceive it as being uh, a coloured uh, mid-range presentation and treble presentation. It just sounds more more appealing to my ears. That that's that's the truth. It just sounds it just sounds to me personally better than the than the uh, shine. As compared to the now the two more expensive ones, these two well more cheaper. As compared to the two more expensive ones, with the GD three C the the G D three C is about being polished in its presentation. And in that way, yes it is a superior IM to uh, the um, shine where the shine uh, definitely is capable of trading more serious blows and in, 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 in keeping up and maybe even improving on, on the GD3C is when it comes to the scaling. This takes really well to, to scaling. I mean, I had my NX7 maxed out almost. Uh, while with the GD, I, I get to about three quarters and then you, you feel like you you straining everything on here? No, it never feels like it's strained. As compared to this, the the try the try star C, sorry, uh, the try star C, like I mentioned in the beginning, is an IEM that when you listen to it, you feel that hi-fi vibe, and there alone, I think I am saying everything. Okay, you do not get that vibe here. So, the technicalities of that are an, are an absolute. At, 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 well, not only at its price range, but at, at a price range even more expensive IMs sometimes do not have the technicalities that the Star C has. Crazy detailed retrieval, really good sound stage, really good imaging, really good texturing. It, I mean, it's it's what it was made for, and it does it very well, and it easily outshines. Well, it's a pun. There. This easily outdoes the the shine. Uh, the only area where I think again the shine can outdo that is when it comes to again volume scaling. So it can take you know power better. Um, so side grade, a person personally I think this is better. It doesn't uh, ultimately beat the GD3C and it doesn't ultimately beat also the the TriStar C. So the claims or the suggestions that they are making it can keep up with those IMs that they mentioned uh, maybe with those in particular it can do better than you know but with these ones that I've chosen uh, no it, 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 it's, it's a good alternative it's an interesting alternative it's a, in my opinion a piece of history but it's not an IM that outright just beats the Star C or the GD3C it, no, it doesn't beat those two Okay, with regards to the HM20 and with the ST5 that's something that it can happen depending on on you or your personal taste or what music you listen to. Finally, compared to the cadenza, how the how does the uh, the, the 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 shine perform? Well, again, this is gonna maybe get me into into a little bit of trouble, but I would take the cadenza over the shine. Um, the 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 very few times that I saw myself saying, oh wow, the shine did that better, did not I weigh, outweigh the times where this was superior. Uh, and I think it's down to the simple or simple simplicity of the whole IEM. The way that it's, the, the fact that it's been done in a, in a simple, single LED manner, tuned well, uh, has enabled it to just sound uh, very organic when compared to the, to the, to the uh, shine. It's, it's it's very correct tonally in my opinion only sometimes it can sound a little bit overly thick but for the most part it sounds better tonality it has better timbre and tonality than the shine uh, in terms of its sound stage imaging um, again I think uh, in my opinion it, it, it outshines the, the shine it does better especially in the imaging department it images better than the than the shine um, and overall, overall, again, for me, my personal opinion, my personal taste of music that I listen to, 
I think that the cadenza is something that I would take over the the, the shine. Um, let me make one small perfectly clear, okay? That's my opinion with regards to these two IEMs, me preferring these two to the shine. As with you know, with regards to the ST5 and ultimately with these two, I'm sure that there will be more people that perhaps will not agree and will not say that they are better than, than the Shine. On the other hand, when it comes to the Star C and the GD3C, I think there will be many more people agreeing with me that those two are definitely superior to, to the, 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 the Joy Audio. So there you have it, guys. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very positive launch from KZ and I'm saying KZ because I'm I'm on I'm honestly really convinced that it's a product that cuz that's come from the KZ stables that it is under the KZ umbrella and I welcome it that's the the reality you know you might think that oh he doesn't think no no I think it's about time they done it it's about time they've launched a high end brand with high end better quality products however and like I said I think this is more of an IEM that you should purchase if you want to be part of history and have something which is the beginning of what I uh, what I think will be a very favorable period of really some 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 well designed well tuned uh, hybrids and maybe other things from KZ I, I truly believe that KZ will this year surprise us in a very positive manner and this is just a glimpse of what is to come so I leave it to your to your discretion. If uh, you obviously you want to buy, like I always leave, I never force any. I never really. I I, I think I never s said no. You have to buy it because no, no. You know we all know what money we have to spend. We all know what we have to, you know, uh, where, how far we can go. And the the reality is this: if you own a Star C, you do not need this. If you own a GD three C, you do not need this. And if you own any one of these three. It's probably going to be a question of um, taste, what music I like listening to. Um, you know, uh, although the switches, as mentioned, uh, are tailored to, 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 to potentiate or to, to make certain music genres sound better, I actually, like I mentioned, you know, uh, already twice before or three times, I actually found that the, the 1001 setting and the, and the and uh, the 0000 setting, the standard stock setting, I think those two settings are the most versatile in terms of what music you can put through it and it will always sound good. Anyway guys, I know this has been a really, really long review um, and I honestly think I'm, I'm going to keep the, the graph section to a, second, to a second review so that this doesn't carry on and uh, yeah, and leave it at that. Any questions, please feel free to ask shoot don't hesitate and uh, the graph section i'll do a completely separate video and so that it's nice and small so that those that want to to you know uh, listen to me for for so long can just go directly to that video and that's it all right as always like and subscribe and uh yeah keep safe take care bye bye